wicked world Searching for the light in the darkness Greetings everybody, welcome to Rock the Word 153. Um, it is the middle of May and um, liturgically it's a, a very unique time of year. I like to call it the Advent season in Easter. And uh, why do I say that? Well, we're in between Ascension Thursday and Pentecost Sunday. And uh, the readings all uh, gear us toward the coming of the Holy Spirit. So it's a special time. It's a time, you know, in the Christmas season, um, in Advent, we wait for the birth of Christ. And in the Easter season, as the Easter, Easter season winds down, we enter this very special time where we wait for the coming of the Holy Spirit. And um, so all the readings now uh, get us in the, in the mode of uh, waiting for the Spirit, that Jesus promises this advocate that when he leaves them, when he ascends, so he ascends, we celebrated that uh, yesterday. Uh, some dioceses celebrate um, Ascension Sunday, but we in Philadelphia still celebrate Ascension Thursday. And so, um, Jesus ascends and he promises that he will send them an advocate and this advocate is the Holy Spirit. So we wait with joy. We wait with open arms, open hearts, open minds to uh, the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And um, one of the greatest gifts of um, the, uh, the coming of the Holy Spirit is the gift of understanding. So uh, as I gathered my thoughts and prayers for this edition of Rock the Word 153, I was focusing my thoughts and prayers on that gift of understanding. And uh, the inspiration for this episode came from none other than Elvis Costello. In uh, 1978, he had a big hit with uh, What's So Funny About Peace, Love and Understanding. And I, the song came to me and I thought, oh my Lord, as I looked at the words, the words were perfect. Um, especially in line with the readings during this time of year, especially for Pentecost Sunday, um, which is May 23rd and, uh, and throughout the Easter season. So uh, this song, uh, as I said, it came out in 1978. It was written by Nick Lowe and actually wound up as a B-side for one of uh, a single by Nick Lowe. And then it became its own hit and wound up on the uh, Elvis Costello and the Attractions album, Armed Forces. So um, this goes back a couple of decades, but uh, it was a big hit and uh, brings me right back actually to my days at Villanova University. Uh, that's, that's really when I got into Elvis Costello and, and this was of course um, one of his biggest hits. So in the song, he sings, uh, as I walk through this wicked world, searching for light in the darkness of insanity, I ask myself, is all hope lost? Is there only pain and hatred and misery? And each time I feel like this inside, there's one thing I want to know. What's so funny about peace, love, and understanding? What's so funny about peace, love, and understanding? And, uh, you know, the, the primary message, of course, of the Easter season is love. In fact, um, and peace. So love and peace are two primary themes of the Easter season. And then on Pentecost Sunday, the great gift of understanding, right? So uh, I, I just happened to look up. How many times do we hear the word peace or peace be with you in the Bible? Now, of course, depending on what version of the Bible you use, it appears between 238 times and 420 times. So to say that peace is a central theme of Scripture, I think, uh, goes without saying. But um, to our song, it's, you know, sort of a lamenting the troubles in the world. And, you know, sometimes um, that's easy to do, isn't it? You know, if we think about troubles in our own lives or if we uh, read the news and we hear about all the troubles in the world, Sometimes our human tendency might be to lose our focus on these wonderful themes of this special season of Easter, especially this time in between Ascension and Pentecost Sunday. So um, it brings me to uh, three particular scriptures. Two of those scriptures, two of these scriptures that I'm about to reference 
are from Pentecost Sunday. And uh, one is from the Acts of the Apostles, and it's Acts 2, 1 to 11. Um, and it's the first reading for Pentecost Sunday. And, um, and it goes like this. When the time of, for Pentecost was fulfilled, they were all in one place together. And suddenly there came from the sky a noise like a strong driving wind, and it filled the entire house in which they were. Then there appeared to them tongues as a fire, which parted and came to rest on each one of them, and they were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in different tongues, as the Spirit enabled them to proclaim. And then the astonishment of the people. At this sound, they gathered in a large crowd, but they were confused because each one heard them speaking in his own language. They were astounded, and in amazement, they asked, Are not all these people who are speaking Galileans? Then how does each of us hear them in his native language? We are Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, inhabitants of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia, and Pamphylia, Egypt and the districts of Libya near Cyrene, as well as travelers from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs, yet we hear them speaking in our own tongues of the many acts of God. So one of the great gifts of Pentecost is the gift of understanding. Regardless of what language was being spoken, they heard this message of all the great gifts that God wanted to give them in their own native tongue. That, that's amazing. And that image of the Spirit granting that gift of understanding, right? How often in our world do we feel that what we really need is understanding, right? Especially with people that are different than we are, people who speak different languages than we do, who believe different things than we do, who look different than we do, all the differences in the world right? Yet the gift of the Holy Spirit is the gift of understanding. And it comes out loud and clear in Acts 2, 1 to 11. And then the gift of peace. So from that same uh, Pentecost Sunday reading, John 20, 19 to 23, on the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. Whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. So, you know, another gift of the Holy Spirit is peace. And one of the ways that we know that we're manifesting that gift of peace is when it comes, if it comes from God and it emanates from us and it brings us peace, then we know that we're on the right track because God is love, God is peace, God is understanding. And so Jesus, when he appears with his disciples in this little gospel passage today, twice, twice wishes his disciples peace. It's almost as if he's wishing them peace, calms them down a bit, wishes them peace again, and then he gives them the gift of the Holy Spirit. So perhaps during this uh, very special time between Ascension and Pentecost, we might want to ask ourselves, you know, what's the quality of our peace? Peace that only God could give us, peace that doesn't come from the world, but peace that's really more uh, a disposition of our soul, right? That, that the outside world and maybe potential bad news really can't rock because what we have is that gift of peace that only the Lord could give. And, um, and that, that's a really solid gift that the Lord gives us at this time. And then, of course, there's love. So uh, I, I go to the reading that we hear often at weddings from 1 Corinthians 13, 1 to 13. And St. Paul loves to give us um, lists. And of course, we know this reading. We've heard it many, many times. 
Uh, if I have the gift of prop prophecy and comprehend all mysteries and all knowledge, if I have all faith so as to move mountains but do not have love, I am nothing. Love is patient, love is kind, it is not jealous. Love is not pompous, it is not inflated, it is not rude. It does not seek its own interest. It is not quick-tempered. It does not brood over injuries. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. And I love how Paul ends this little part of 1 Corinthians. So faith, hope, love remain. These three, but the greatest of these is love. And so... I, again, I, I refer back to the song by Elvis Costello, What's So Funny About Peace, Love, and Understanding. And, uh, you know, he sort of asked that question in the song as like a rhetorical question. Of course, there's nothing funny about it at all. It's what we all need. We all need understanding. You know, it's been a tough year. So in our humanity, we may be tempted to um, lose our focus. We might be tempted to lose sight of the Lord's gifts of peace, love, and understanding. It's been a tough year. It's been a year where there's been a lot of strife in our nation, in our world. Uh, there are signs all over the place, God willing, that we're coming out of this pandemic. But we might be weary from it all. Yet we remember, number one, it's spring, and that always gives us hope. Number two, it's Easter, and the promise of the resurrection is amazing. And third, we're on the uh, cusp of Pentecost, in between Ascension and Pentecost. And so if we're tempted to lose hope, if we're tempted to lose our focus, you know, I'll refer back to the um, lyric of the song. And, you know, Elvis sings, through troubled times, my spirit gets so downhearted sometimes. So where are the strong and who are the trusted? And where is the harmony? Sweet, harmony you know and then he goes back to the refrain because each time i feel it slipping away just makes me want to cry what's so funny about peace love and understanding and so if if we're in that in our human mode and in our humanity tempted to feel downhearted let's remember the lord gives us his peace the peace that only he can give he gives us the gift of love only love that comes from the source of love. God is love. And at Pentecost, we get the great gift of the Holy Spirit to guide us, to fill us, to animate us, to lead us, to show us the way. So maybe we want to ask ourselves the question, what is the quality of the peace inside? Do I have that peace that only the Lord can give? And what about love? Have I shown love? Have I accepted love? Have I been loving? And, you know, again, with all the strife and all the different troubles in the world, maybe it really is time for us to pray in a special way for that gift of understanding. Whether people speak a different language literally or, you know, symbolically because they're so different than we are. So maybe we pray in a special way for that gift of understanding. We are all connected after all, and perhaps the Lord's gift of understanding could be ours, that we might understand one another as brothers and sisters in the Lord just a little bit more, especially at this time of year. So um, as we rock the word, pray it loud, and uh, God willing, the gifts of peace, love, and understanding from the Lord will be ours. God bless you. Much love from me to you. As I walk through this wicked world Searching for the light in the darkness of insanity I ask myself, is all hope lost? Is there only pain and hatred and misery? And each time I feel like this inside, 
There's one thing I wanna know What's so funny about peace, love, and understanding? Oh, what's so funny about peace, love, and understanding? Sometimes So where are the strong And who are the trusted And where is the Harmony Sweet harmony Cause each time I feel it slipping away It just makes me want to cry What's so funny about peace, love, and understanding And where is the 